When you were a rookie, Phil Esposito said to you, kid, if you don't drink, don't start. Now, these words obviously made an impression on you because you remember them to this day. Yeah. Did you consider them at all? Or oh, yeah. I had the choice. When, that, when, when Cheever said to me, and he's a good guy, Joe, he said, kid, you want beer? My first training camp. And you want to belong. You want to be liked. And I said, uh, I don't drink. And he said, oh, then you're finished. You'll never make it. And he was kind of oh, joking. I didn't know that because I wasn't very worldly at the time. And Esposito says, hey, kid, if you don't drink, don't start. So I had a choice. And I chose to drink. I chose to learn how to drink. And I didn't know it was going to be as devastating as it was till I ended up at the counselor after 13 detoxes who told me why. It was such a big deal. And uh, so Joe, the book's got all that in it. And it, it is something that I, uh, it was a bad choice. One of many that started down that road. I see, we're, our life is a series of choices. Like fifth grade, third grade. Like people say, sticks and stones will break my bones and names will never hurt me. Names are the carvings. The names, the bullying, and that's why we go this way or that way, avert, change, don't go, don't get involved, don't go there, don't go alone, have this friend. We do that because we get insulted by people who don't like us or we don't like them. Or why do we try to please people that don't like us? That always amazed me. And I did it all my life. And all my friends and my family that I had were solid and, and backed me up. I took them for granted. And I always went on trying to impress other people. Stupid. But you start making silly decisions and you'll pay the price. So then do you think it was more the hockey culture than the fear of flying? Because you said that also contributed to your... Yeah, well, I, I learned how to drink a lot fast because of my fear of flying. Uh, and it was on a, uh, there was a, a big accident. We had a, well, there was an explosion not, in a DC-9, one of the engines, and, a, and we started bailing out, and a big, this plane was whining, and it was going down. I saw, I saw lights in California. We're going from Oakland Seals to Los Angeles Kings and Southern Mountains in California, and then, and I tried to teammate it across the hole. Whoa, didn't spill a drop. And, you know, playing with that one. And I said, how many miles? You're going to fly 110,000 miles a year, 10 years, 15 years, a million and a half. Something's got to happen. So it was the odds that I didn't like. So that was the justification and the rationalization to drink more. I didn't realize I was doing that at that point. So I used to get four or five fingers, six, you know, boom, throw it back hold my breath, chew a piece of benzene, smoke a cigarette, and drink a 7-Up, and pour myself on a plane and get out. It was five, six shots to go to Chicago, you know, 10 to go to LA, just a couple to go to New York. But it was the way I always flew. And then it got worse. You could just really build a tolerance to it that way. And I own four nightclubs, that didn't help. <laughs> so you start sipping at noon, one o'clock mm -hmm. after practice, you have lunch. And mm -hmm becomes a way of life very quickly. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.